Well, uh, ultimately what happened was that Congress voted to certify the Electoral College vote, and that was what was on, on the calendar from the start. In between the beginning of that process and, the, and, and wrapping it up, uh, a mob uh, occupied the Capitol briefly, interrupted the process, and the members of Congress and the Senate needed to uh, shelter and be removed from the premises. Eventually, uh, they uh, regained their chambers and they finished the process. The riot took place because the crowd, which originally gathered uh, closer to the White House for a protest against uh, alleged fraud in these elections, was encouraged by the president to walk down Pennsylvania Avenue to encourage Congress to show some strength uh, in, uh, in resisting uh, the, the fraud in the election that he alleges. None of that has any basis to it. The allegations of fraud have been uh, heard in court and thrown out. Uh, they've been considered by state legislatures and by state uh, electoral officials and dismissed. Um, there's no basis to any of it. Yeah, I think clearly President Trump should be held responsible. He, uh, you know, he's, he's on record uh, at the rally encouraging his followers to go down and, uh, and, and go to the Capitol. He has refused uh, both before the election and since the election to commit himself to a peaceful transfer of power only late last night uh, via a staff member, I think, the, the White House issued a statement that made a commitment to the peaceful transfer of power. But President Trump has never done that, and he's had many opportunities to do so. Um, he's, he has gone to great lengths to encourage this kind of behavior, to encourage false beliefs on the part of his supporters. Uh, and I think absolutely he's responsible. Oh, gosh. Well, the 25th Amendment um, has a number of different sections to it, and it's been... Uh, it's been enacted before uh, to transfer the power of the presidency to the vice president when, the pres when, when prior presidents have been unable to uh, carry out the duties of office. This has been, you know, in cases where uh, presidents have undergone surgery and so forth. The vice president and a majority of the members of the cabinet uh, could uh, remove the president from office if they make the determination that he is unfit, incapable of carrying out the duties. Um, if the president objected to uh, or disagreed with that judgment, then he would have an opportunity to respond. And, and then at that point, Congress would need to weigh in. And only by a two thirds majority then could Cong or two thirds majorities in both chambers could Congress uh, remove the president. But uh, in the short term, we've only got a short period of time between now and when President Trump will be replaced at any rate, because the Biden administration, Biden will be inaugurated on January 20th. So there could be a short term removal and uh, we'd be on uncharted constitutional terrain as to how quickly uh, a presidential objection to that removal could be, could be uh, evaluated and processed. You know, if I had to guess, I, I would bet that, uh, that the Trump is going to continue to be president between now and January 20th and, and that Biden will be sworn in as scheduled. The critical thing going forward as, it, as, as radical as the, the mob at the Capitol was yesterday, um, I think just as important a thing for going forward is the fact that 139 members, Republican members of the House of Representatives and eight Republican senators voted not to certify the Electoral College vote yesterday, even after the, the, the rampage at the Capitol. Those members of Congress, most of them are you know, remain members of Congress, members of the Senate, um, and they, you know, the clear, they weren't voting on whether to approve the, the occupation of the Capitol yesterday or not, but they were, they were voting on the legitimacy of the presidential election, and they voted no, effectively. Um, so going forward, what's going to happen to the Republican Party is the big question mark. Whether the Republican Party is going to embrace democracy uh, and or the Constitution and the rule of law, or are they going to embrace effectively anarchy and a rejection of the rule of law and democracy? That's a huge question, and the Republican Party has not ironed that out yet.